Welcome to Pulverde United Methodist Church online worship service. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship. We are a dynamic congregation of over 1,400 members, and we have three very different worship styles. We have contemporary, traditional, and then a blended service. We hope that you can see a little glimpse of each of those services in our worship that we put out for you during this COVID pandemic. We are a church filled of people who love others, who get out and proclaim God's word, who serve and who truly welcome all as a body of Christ. We hope you enjoy this time. We hope you get to worship God. And most importantly, we pray that your faith is strengthened and grown during this time. Thank you all for being part of our service and we hope you enjoy the glimpse at our congregation and some of the people that make up our church family and we hope that you enjoy worshiping God. Amen. Please join us in raising your voices. Let's make a joyful noise today. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Slave from every people and tribe, 
worthy because you are worthy. But that worthiness comes to us not because of something that we've done, not how great we are, how wonderful we are, how much money we make, or the size of the house we live in, or the car that we drive. We are worthy because you are worthy. You created us. And during this time of social distancing, Lord, sometimes it's hard for us to remember that. It's hard for us to remember that, that we are to be a communal people, that we are to gather with one another. And even though now we are worshiping you in our homes, we struggle in not being with our friends, not being with our church, not being able to hug one another and encourage one another. So we put that before you now. Lord, we ask that you speak to us your message of grace. We pray that in our self-centeredness, sometimes we forget others. And we confess that there are still times that we forget we're forgiven. And we need to come before you, to come before our brothers and sisters, and say, yes, we are all worthy in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because who and what we can never be by ourselves. And as we as we step forward into your kingdom, into your glorious kingdom, that is a present reality and a future hope, may it encourage us, may it strengthen us, may it empower us that no matter what we are dealing with in the world, no matter what kind of virus this is that's out there, you have claimed healing upon it. And you have claimed us as your children. May we turn to you. May we encourage others to turn to you. May you be a beacon of hope to us in the world that is torn apart right now. We pray for those that are trying to guide us. We pray for your church. We pray for your people. And may we in God's holy name say, series about you are, you are, are all the things, it's the identity that we can claim through the promises of God uh, made to us through Jesus Christ. Uh, you are saved, you are worthy, you are steadfast, you are chosen, you are called, you are strong. Last week, Hannah talked to us about being saved, and, and what a wonderful post-Easter message for us. Today, we kind of continue on with First Peter, and we're talking about being worthy, and that you are worthy. I want you to, to really accept that and understand that and live by that. It's not by, by what you have done, but because of what Jesus has done, you are worthy. Amen? Amen. But the reality is, is even if we say that, we're, we continually ask this question, who are you? And my heart goes out to the young people today, uh, especially those that are missing their high school graduations or proms or all the social gatherings, because the reality is, is many of those events, it is young people coming together to figure out who they are, to figure out who the other person is, and, and they're missing that. They're, they actually come, whether they realize it or not, asking that question, who, who are you? I mean, have you ever considered it in your life? Who are you? And in this instance, who are you in Christ? Who are you? Um, do you know you're worthy? Do you know you're made by God? Do you know you're holy? Well, maybe you don't. 
but the reality is you are. And I want you to hold on to that thought for a moment because what I want us to do to explore this question about who are you is I want us to look at 1 Peter. Uh, we started a little bit with 1 Peter last week. We'll continue on with 1 Peter. It is Remember, this is the guy that uh, denied Jesus three times before the, the cock crow. This is the guy that and, and kind of defied him and said, surely not you, Lord, you're not going to go to the cross. And this is also the man that Jesus says to you, I'm going to give you the kingdoms, the keys to the kingdom. So this Peter, finally toward the end of his life, writes this wonderful letter to us, telling us what our identity is. So 1 Peter 1, 13 through 23 continues with telling us who we are in Christ. Therefore, once you have your minds ready for action and you're thinking clearly, place your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Don't be conformed to your former desires, those that shaped you when you're ignorant. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your life. Just as the one who called you is holy, it is written, you will be holy because I am holy. Since you call upon a father who judges all people according to their actions without favoritism, you should conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your dwelling in a strange land. Live in this way, knowing that you are not liberated by perishable things like silver or gold from the empty lifestyle you inherited from your ancestors. Instead, you were liberated by the precious blood of Christ, like that of a flawless, spotless lamb. Christ was chosen before the creation of the world, but was only revealed at the end of time. This was done for you, who through Christ are faithful to the God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So now your faith and hope should rest in God. As you set yourselves apart by your obedience to the truth, so that you might have a genuine affection for your fellow believers, love each other deeply and earnestly. Do this because you've been given new birth, not from the type of seed that decays, but from seed that doesn't. This seed is God's life-giving and enduring word. The word of God for the people. So we ask this question, are you worthy? And the question that I have to ask you is, you are worthy? You are worthy? Am I worthy? I mean, we, it's almost, it's almost um, uh, a, a question that causes us to, to contemplate our own existence. How in the world can I be worthy? If you only knew what I've done, Lord, if you've only known who I was. Have you ever had that conversation? Now, worthy means having worth. Now, I know you're not supposed to define words with a word, but it means uh, to have value or of merit or of importance. And I guess the antithesis of that would be worthless or having no value. And, you know, what do we determine is of worth or of not of worth? It's kind of like cleaning out our closets. Do we want to keep this or not clean, keep this? What if God cleaned out his closets and said, eh. but the reality is God's closets are full. They're full of people that he says are worthy. But sometimes the world tells us that we're worthless. But God says we're worthy, for God is worthy. I love that passage from 1 Peter uh, where it says, be holy for I am holy. It's taken from Leviticus. Leviticus, you know, all the things that are in Leviticus, one of the most important things that's in there is this aspect that God is holy and therefore we must also be holy. And it's a promise. And because that, that Christ is in us, God's holiness makes us worthy. It ha doesn't have to do with our value that we see on the surface. It doesn't have to do with what we do in life, or how much money we make, or what house we live in, or what car we drive, or all the other things that you can throw in there. It has to do with this heart that is right with Christ. 
But there's something more about this. And because, because we're worthy, because Christ is in us, it tells us at the end of 1 Peter, this passage that we read today, as you set yourselves apart by your obedience to the truth, that you might have genuine affection for your fellow believers, love each other deeply and earnestly. The reality is, is not only are you worthy, but your neighbor across the street is worthy. The person sitting next, next to you right now is worthy. The clerk at the grocery market that has worked tirelessly during this, this terrible time is worthy. All that you encounter are worthy because God says they have value. Now the reality is, is this worthy um, comes to us so that we can be better people of love. It comes to us so that, that we can... Um, so that we within ourselves can be better people. It doesn't, we, we're not worthy of God to make us special. You know, I take Jesus as my Savior. I'm better than you. Uh, that's not it at all. But sometimes we think that in the church. Sometimes we think that, that saying someone is worthy, it, it means that we are entitled. You know, uh, that, that, you know I love this, I love that picture of the, of the teenage child with his parents bowing down to him. I mean, we, we, sadly, we do have kids today like that that, that think they're, they're entitled. The reality is entitled, we feel that way because of some sort of inner anger, jealousy of someone else's, um, it, jealousy of that other person. And so, so we think that we need to be entitled so we can get what we deserve, right? You know, sadly, when I consider all the people that think they're entitled, um, this is kind of self-revealing. Um, I think clergy are some of the most guilty of that aspect of being entitled. Now, I'm a man of the cloth. I'm a man of God, or I'm a woman of God. I deserve this. Or, what's really interesting, you know, we as Methodists, we're in this appointment time season where clergy are appointed to other churches. And, and maybe I've never heard this before, but I've heard stories of clergy going, can you believe they went to that appointment? They weren't deserving of that. And of course, lay people, well, let's just say it's our human nature, that sometimes we have this entitlement complex, this jealousy complex, this, this you know, well, you know what, she got what she deserved, right? Right? Preaching to the praise band right now. I'm not sure if they're getting it or not, but uh, hopefully you at home are. The reality is, is that you are worthy because of, of our intrinsic value from God. It's not from us. It's not what appointment we have or what car we drive or what house we live in or what neighborhood we're in. That intrinsic value comes from us from God, whether we live out in the Stone Oak area or the Bulberry area or Southside San Antonio all of us have the intrinsic value from God. Amen? Amen. But we forget that. I love what, what Peter says. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you is holy. So to say that one is holy often scares people. But it shouldn't scare us. It, what it should do is it should set us apart and say, you know, I have a responsibility. God loves me unconditionally. God wants a relationship with me unconditionally. I've accepted that relationship. I'm, I'm, I'm in God's army. I'm, I, I've called him my savior. And now I have this responsibility to live within it. It means that we change. But the reality is, is we can't will change to happen in our lives. It has to be God doing the work. It's kind of like buying an old house that you say, you know, this house has some great bones. I'll just do a little bit of work to it, bit by bit, tweak it. New flooring here, new paint here, new cabinet here. Maybe just changing out the cabinet doors. When, when God takes over our lives, God starts to remodel our house to make us more like God, to be more Christ-like in everything we do. And, and, and God does this because he says you're worthy. You're not a starter house. I'm not... I'm not going to just buy you and flip you. I've invested my son into you. And you're worthy. So let me bit by bit work with you and change you. So I, I want you to ponder some questions. Is, is 
How do we focus our hope on the grace of Jesus Christ? How do we in our lives say, say, you know, I'm dealing with the pandemic now. I'm dealing with, with staying at home. I'm dealing with trying to work from home or my children are doing school from home. Or, you know, we, you know, we're not getting out and about as we were. Maybe it'll happen soon. I don't know. We're having to worship from home. Are you enjoying your coffee and your pajamas, by the way, right now? So I hope you are. But we have to focus on the hope of the grace of Jesus Christ. And, it, and, and in that, we accept our worthiness. And it affects a change of holiness within us. And that holiness comes from God. It doesn't come from us. It's not something that we can, can do. We can't will it to happen. I've accepted Jesus. Now I'm going to be perfect. Wow. God has to do some work. But I will say this, that if we accept that God is, is saying that we are worthy and is making us holy, then no dimension of our life, all of our life, even our attitudes about everything, falls outside the scope of holy living. In other words, aspects about how we spend our money, aspects about worship, aspects about how we encounter others, how we treat others, how we encourage others or not encourage others. How we drive down the highway. How we go in those stores or wait in those lines. All aspects of our life needs to give honor to Christ. Because he says you're worthy. And therefore, if you're worthy, then that person six feet away from you is worthy. Sometimes that's hard for us to remember, friends. But it's a reality. That we are to be worthy. There was an Anglican bishop um, in the 17th century England by the name of Jeremy Taylor. And Jeremy Taylor wrote a book called Rules of Holy Living in, in 1650. And he, he encountered a, an experience of, of the death of his, of his wife and everything that she went through that. And so he, he wrote a next book, kind of a subsequent book, to Rules of Holy Living. And guess what? He called it Rules of Holy Dying. And what it was, was, was works of piety, works of, of devotional aspects of life, where he said that, that our life needs to be one of moderation, of turning our life over to God, of living, truly living a life of piety, of holiness. And, it, and there's one person that he greatly affected. Guess what? It's John Wesley, you know, the founder of the Methodist movement. By Wesley reading uh, Jeremy Taylor, he realized that this is God's call upon all of our lives. To grow in holiness, to grow into perfection, to grow into love of Christ, and and this was such a such an important um, aspect of the church that it, that it affected Wesley, but also two hundred years after Jeremy Taylor, another another Anglican writer uh, wrote a commentary about Jeremy Taylor in eighteen sixty, and when I ran across this this comment, I went, wow, that's that could fit for today. And this is what he said. It is a matter of high importance in all days and especially in days of popular anxiety like our own. This is 1860. To keep before the examples of minds distinguished in the former trials of our country. No theory of virtue is equal in value to its practice embodied in a wise, pure, and manly understanding. That we are to live that holy life that holy living, just as important as it is today, as it was in 1860, as it was in the 1740s and 50s and 60s with Wesley, as it was in 1650 with Jeremy Taylor. If we want to live a holy life, we have to accept that our intrinsic worth comes wholly and solely from God. Not what we do on our own. Not how many friends we have. Not how quick we are on social media. Not all the memes that we post every day. Not how cute we think we can be. And I know that's important because it brings levity to my life. But we have to ask the question in a different way today. Who are you? Who are you in Christ? During this series, we're going to use some terms like say and worthy and steadfast and chosen 
and calm and strong. Those are the descriptors that we're going to use over six weeks. You may have some more. But the bottom line on all of that is that you are a child of God. You are chosen by God to be in relationship with Him. You, my friends, are worthy. You are worthy. And let God's people say, Amen. Please join me as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. hospital workers, those that are truly in harm's way as they continue to care for us during this time. We pray for those that are still battling with this coronavirus. We pray for their healing, for their strength. We pray for families. We pray that all may, may find your healing presence in their lives. This virus has taken its toll upon us. Some now are finally taking care of medical procedures that they have, have put off and are now going back to the hospital. We pray for their successful surgery. We pray for your friends who have been sick or hurting or lonely. We pray especially for God's presence in our lives. Lord, we lift up to you all families, especially those with children at home of all ages, all school ages. We're just grieve the loss of the rest of the school year. We pray for parents as they try to balance working at home and teaching their kids, that this be a time of usefulness, of beautiful memories being made, not a time of stress. Give parents and children patience with each other to show love and kindness. Father, we lift up today to you seniors among us the older adults in our society and in our church and our church family those who are living alone experiencing extreme loneliness during this time those in assisted living facilities and in nursing homes many of whom have not been able to see family members for weeks now we lift up to you those persons today who are needy and crying out for, for help and for love and for uh, those persons who might uh, just show them some uh, concern and some joy and uh, help give them the uh, knowledge that you are with them always, that you are there uh, to love and protect, guide and, and uh, provide mercy to them. We ask your blessing on all of these folks today and always. Please join me in saying aloud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have a lovely uh, affirmation of faith that is, comes to us from the Korean Methodist Church. Read along aloud as I read the faith of the Korean Methodist Church statement of our faith. We believe in one God, creator and sus sustainer of all things, father of all nations the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifested the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please know that your pastors are praying for you. Stay safe. Please join me in singing Blessed Assurance. you've heard the message today you realize that you are a person of worth we see your worth here at Bulverde United Methodist Church but more importantly God sees your worth God looks at you and sees your beauty sees how amazing you are and that's why he sent his son to die on the cross for you because you are worthy now, if you take that message that Pastor Ralph preached today, if you take that to heart, who do you need to share it with in this world right now that they need to know that they are worthy, that their life has value, that their life has meaning all because of what Jesus did for them? Go out and share that with someone today. Speak life into someone today to let them know that they are worthy as well. Go in peace.